All right. So because we are not using a Raspberry Pi and we're not using something that has a built-in I2C, we have to use this little board, which is our FT232H from Adafruit. It is a multi-protocol USB, I2C, SPI, and GPIO um, input-output board. And uh, we want to connect up this AMG8833 uh, thermal sensor. So in our code, what we had to do was first we, we bring in sys, we bring in OS path, um, we let this do its thing. Uh, we have from time, we imported sleep, we had import numpy as NP, we have import CV2, which is OpenCV2, we have import OS. Um, what we're doing here is we are setting an environment variable. Uh, which is Blinka underscore FT232H, and that is set to 1. And what that is doing is that is allowing our system to actually access this uh, chip. Uh, next thing we're doing is importing bus IO, and we are importing board, and we then are importing Adafruit AMG88XX, and then we are importing uh, FTDI, but from that we are, I'm sorry, we're importing pi FTDI dot FTDI and we are importing FTDI from that. Uh, and then what we're doing is we first are identifying um, that our, our system is working. So what we're doing is we are opening FTDI open from URL and that is FTDI equals slash slash FTDI colon 232H colon 1 slash 1. Uh, then what we are doing from there is we are assigning our I2C bus, uh, and what we are saying that is is um, bus io dot I2C board dot SCL comma board dot SDA. So what that's doing is that is assigning our pins from our board here, uh, and what we had to do on this board to make sure that it it worked with SDA and I2C is we had to connect up our voltage through our three volt. We have our ground, which is connected to our ground. Uh, and then in order to get the, uh, the SCL to work, we had to, well, first connect that up to the SCL, which is our clock. And then for SDA, which is our data, that had to be a combination of the MISO and the MOSI port on this chip. So those two connected had to uh, daisy chain into one row to give us our input output. And that is muxed uh, once it gets to that, that chip. So that is where we are defining uh, what is the SCL and the SDA. That is uh, the SCL and the SDA. Um, then what we do is we are initiating the Adafruit library for the uh, AMG88XX. Um, we're bringing in AMGXX and we are telling it to access that on these two ports and we're calling that sensor. Then what we do the first time we run this code is we sleep for a millisecond and uh, I'm sure, or just not mill, yeah, millisecond and uh, we let the board come on and then we are pre-allocating the matrix called uh, norm picks and that is that's just a list here and then we start with a try and while one so while one is also the equivalent of while true uh, what we're doing is we are assigning normal picks equals numpy array sensor dot pixels uh, d type equals numpy uh, unint 8 and unint means unsigned integer, uh, so there is no plus or minus on the integer. Um, and then just to, to break this down a little further, what uh, sensor.pixel is doing is, is reading from the board the integer uh, that reflects the pixels coming in. Then what we're doing is we are creating a blank uh, numpy array called IM color. And uh, this is NumPy zeros, so it's making an 8 by 8 array of uh, zeros, and those are unassigned integers as well that are 8-bit. Um, then what we are doing is we are applying a normalization to our data set, and uh, the normalization is taking the input of what's coming out of the sensor, and it is putting it into this IM color. And what it's doing is it is pulling the data from uh, the 
top and bottom of the, the pixel values and it's making the lowest value equal 0 and the highest value equal 255. Uh, from there what we're doing is we are printing that which you are seeing right here on the uh, in, in the terminal output and from there what we are doing is then applying uh, what is called a color map in OpenCV and the color map basically just turns the uh, the black and white information into color information so this looks prettier than just looking at a grayscale um, then from there what we are doing is we are resizing this because our original data set is actually only 8 by 8 which would show up really small on the screen um, so we are actually turning it into something that is larger than 8 by 8 so that we can see what's going on. Um, looks like I just realized we have some feedback going on in this, this crazy video. Doesn't matter. Um, so 8 by 8 we, we turn it into 512 by 512 so it, it runs and we can see what's happening um, and that's what we're, we're doing here. We're resizing it and then we have this line of code cv2.imshow thermal normal picks. It's taking this input putting it here naming it thermal which you can uh, actually you can't see um, but the name of the uh, window that the data is in is called thermal. Then we have k equals cv weight key. Uh, so this is just needed for the loop that is in OpenCV. And then from there we have if k equals 27, which equals the escape key, we break this loop. On the exception, it says that the control c uh, program stopped to be a keyboard input. Um, and then finally, uh, exiting loop this is if we if we have an exception and then finally it says exiting loop so if I were to bring this down to the bottom up here and I press escape look at that exiting loop and we are done so uh, that was fun um, the next step in this project is going to be uh, twofold one is mounting this little thing inside of a little box and also uh, wiring it up with some vinyl wires so that we don't have to be using our project board or our, our uh, what's it called our breadboard and these uh, testing cables um, and then the second step after that is figuring out an efficient way to get this to run uh, inside of OBS there are two things I'm thinking. I mean, the easiest way that we, we have here is, is we're just screen capturing. Um, but, I, you know, drawing on the screen and, and having to deal with that is not the most efficient way to do this. Uh, what I would like to do is possibly uh, enable MJPEG streaming and uh, create a little web server that is streaming out the data as MJPEG and allow uh, OBS to import that as a video stream and uh, go with it there. But ultimately the best way to do this would be to be able to create a virtual um, V4L uh, I guess input device. So it, it makes pretend that it is a webcam coming in and just sees it as another webcam device in uh, OBS. That would also be really cool because it would let me stream that out to any other platform like a webcam. Um, so basically that's, it's building a, a Python script that um, when you run it, it's basically a driver. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. I'm going to sign off now, and later tonight I might come back and either work on this project or get back to work on our PPE com. Um, so uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, if you have any questions, please feel free to message me. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and catch you later.